In this video, I'm going to show you how to add rational numbers. Now, before we do that, let's review how to add integers. So if we're using a number line, remember we start at the first number, and if we're adding a positive number, we're going to move to the right. If we add a negative number, we're going to move to the left. So let's take a look at these four examples. So we have negative 1, so we start at negative 1, and we're going to add 3. So we're going to go 1, 2, 3, and we end up at 2. If we have negative 1 plus negative 2, we start at negative 1 again. And this time we're adding a negative number, so we're going to go 1, 2, and we end up at negative 3. All right, so the next one we have 1 plus negative 3. So we start at 1. And we're going to add negative 3, so we're going to add, go in the negative direction, 1, 2, 3, and we end up at negative 2. And then the very last one, this is a nice easy one, we start at 1, and we add 2, so of course we're going to go 1, and 2, and we end up at 3. Now, let's take a look at it, this in another way. So when we look at the question, we can see that we have negative 1 plus 3, and we can actually think of two as saying three minus one, which is the numbers three and negative one. Now for negative one and negative two, when we add those together, we can also think of this as one plus two, and that gives us three. But because both of those numbers are negative, negative plus more negative will still give us a negative number. Now in question number three, uh, we see that we have negative, sorry, one plus negative three, but we can also think of this as 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. But when we analyze the numbers, we can see that we have more negatives. So we have negative 3, so our answer will be negative, negative 2. And the last one, they're both positive, so positive plus positive is just going to give us a positive number. All right, so let's extend this to decimal numbers. So when we're adding decimal numbers, um, let's use the number line here, but then also think about which number is larger. Is it the positive number or is it the negative number? So here we have negative 1.4, so that starts down here, and we're going to add 2.3. So I'm going to do this by adding 1. So I'm going to jump to here, and that's 10 spaces, So because we've divided the number line into tenths, so that's plus 1, and we're going to jump all the way again to this next dash, which is a little bit greater than 0.5, so that's plus 2, and then we need to go 2.3, so we're going to go 1, 2, 3. And so this number here is 0 0.9. Now obviously we don't want to use a number line every single time, so how can we think about this? Well, we're going to take the bigger number, and we're going to subtract the smaller number. So we have 2.3 minus 1.4. And when I subtract, get 9, bring down my decimal. And then 1 minus 1 is 0. So we have 0 0.9. And then we have to think which is the larger number. So we have negative 1.4, positive 2.3. We have more positives. So therefore, my answer is going to be positive. 0 0.9. All right, let's take a look at a couple more examples. All right, so here we have add these two numbers. So we have 2.3, sorry, negative 2.3 plus negative 6.8. So we're going to say 2.3. And because both of the numbers are the same sign, we are going to add the two together. And we get 11, so we carry the 1, 6 plus 2 plus 1 is 9. And then we bring the decimal down, right down below, at 9.1. And because we were adding, and both of the numbers are negative, we're going to have more negative, so this will be negative 9.1. All right, in question number 2, we have negative 7.5 plus 4.9. So these two numbers have opposite signs. So when the numbers have opposite signs, we're going to subtract. So we're going to go 7.5, always take the bigger number, subtract the smaller number, ignoring all the signs, 
Okay, so we borrow, so this becomes 6, and this is 15. 15 minus 9 is 6. And then we bring down our decimal right here, and then 6 minus 4 is 2. All right, so we have 2.6. Now, we see that we have a negative 7.5 and positive 4.9. So we have more negatives than positives, so therefore, my answer will be negative here. All right, next we're going to take a look at adding fractions, also a type of rational number. So if the fractions already have a common denominator, that's pretty straightforward. We just add the numerators. Um, otherwise, we need to get a common denominator first. So in the first two examples, we can see that we do have a common denominator. So they're both 7. So we put 7 on the bottom, and we take a look, and we have negative 5 plus 6, and that gives us positive 1. So this first one is going to be 1 seventh. In the next one, we have a common denominator of 9, and we just have to add 2 plus negative 7, and that's going to give us negative 5. Now, in the next two examples, we don't have common denominators, so we're going to have to get the common denominator. So the denominators are 7 and 8, so our lowest common denominator is going to be 7 times 8, which is equal to 56. And so I'm going to multiply the first fraction. Multiply numerator and denominator. Don't just multiply and put 1 8 down. Make sure it's top and bottom. The second fraction, we're going to multiply top and bottom, sorry, by 7. So in the first fraction, I have 8 times negative 5, which is negative 40. And the second fraction I have is 21. Now both of the denominators are the same, so I'm actually just going to draw one big long line and write 56 in the denominator, since it's the same. And then we just have to simply now add negative 40 plus 21, which is negative 19, over 56. All right, now the second one here, uh, the denominators are 8 and 4, so they're different again. But this time we don't have to multiply 8 times 4 because we already know that 4 goes into 8. So therefore, my lowest common denominator is 8. So the first fraction is already okay. I need to multiply the second fraction by 2 over 2. So now I have 2 plus negative 6. And my common denominator of 8 is in the denominator. And then 2 plus negative 6 is negative 4 eighths. And we're going to reduce that to equal negative a half. All right, let's take a look at one more example of adding fractions. Uh, but let's take a look at one where we have mixed numbers. So for mixed numbers, we do need to change them to improper fractions first when they have, um, when we're dealing with negatives. If they were just positive, we wouldn't have to, but because of the negative, uh, we need to make sure that uh, we are um, adding or subtracting the right amount um, because of the negative sign. So here, we're going to have 5 times negative 3, and then we add Oh, so we actually multiply it. So when we change it to a mixed number, we actually don't want to worry about the negative. So we're going to go 5 times 3, and then plus 2, and that will be negative 17 over 5. And then 10 times 2 plus 3 is going to be 23 over 10. So we're going to need to multiply the first fraction by 2. So we get negative 34. plus 23, and they're both over 10, so we're just going to put 10 on the bottom. And negative 34 plus 23 is equal to negative 11 over 10. And then you can change this back to a mixed number if you like, and that would be negative 1 and 1 tenth. So the important thing to remember with the mixed numbers is to remember to change them to improper fraction, because sometimes uh, you might not have enough negatives, you have to borrow or something. Um, by changing it to an improper fraction, you don't have to do that. And then also remember that when you change to a mixed number to an improper fraction, ignore the negatives um, sign when you're multiplying, and just do it normally, and then place the negative sign afterwards.
And that's how you add rational numbers for decimals and also fractions.